AP photo slash Evan Vucci Donald Trump and the White House have made several hyperbolic claims about the Russia investigation. They seemed it to focusing their distraction efforts on the so-called Steele dossier. In reality, the Russia investigation is picking up steam and threatens to derail Trump's presidency. President Donald Trump hasn't delivered on his campaign promise to create U.S. coal or steel jobs. Foreign steel imports are up 27% this year. But he is creating a bonanza in the business of fake news. Admittedly, a lot of those jobs have been outsourced to Russia, but Trump is also providing plenty of employment at home. Even before Monday's bombshells from special counsel Robert Mueller, Trump's campaign manager and his business partner have been indicted on multiple counts of laundering more than $18 million from pro Russian clients in Ukraine. While a Trump foreign policy adviser pleaded guilty to lying about his efforts to solicit Clinton dirt from Russian contacts, Trump and his associates had launched Operation Obfuscation. Their far-fetched claim is that the real collusion isn't between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin. It's between Hillary Clinton and the Kremlin. It is now commonly agreed, after many months of costly looking, that there was no collusion between Russia and Trump, Trump tweeted on Friday. Was collusion with H.C. Then on Sunday, with the indictments looming, a more desperate version of the same message there is so much guilt by Democrats slash Clinton, and now the facts are pouring out. Do something. And on Monday, after the indictments were announced, W. High earned crooked Hillary and the Dems the focus? Picking up the theme, Trump's faithful follower Janine Pirro blared on Fox News it's time to shut it down, turn the tables, and lock her up former White House aide Sebastian Gorka did her one better. He implied that Hillary Clinton was guilty of treason, just like the Rosenbergs, and that she too deserves the electric chair. What, exactly, is the evidence for these hyperbolic claims? White House spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders asserted the evidence Clinton campaign, DNC and Russia colluded to influence the election is indisputable. True, if indisputable has been redefined to mean non-existent. The White House case, based on little more than warmed over hearsay and discredited conspiracy mongering, relates to two familiar controversies the Steele dossier alleging Trump-Russia links and the Russian acquisition of a Canadian company that owns uranium mines in America. The Steele dossier, compiled by the respected former MI6 officer Christopher Steele. Landed in the news recently when a law firm representing the Clinton campaign admitted to having paid opposition research firm Fusion GPS to compile it. Earlier, we now know, Fusion had been hired by conservative news site The Washington Free Beacon to research Trump and other candidates. The horror. If you listen to Trump's defenders, it's perfectly proper for Donald Trump Jr. to seek opposition research from Russian agents but a death penalty offense for the Clinton campaign to try to uncover the Trump-Russia links. In their telling, the investigation of a potential crime is as bad as the crime itself. Huh? The argument seems to be that because Steele talked to Russian sources in the course of compiling his dossier, he, and thus the entire Clinton campaign, was colluding with the Kremlin. By the same logic, any time the CIA talks to Russian agents it, too, is colluding with Russia. This is to render the word collusion meaningless, which is precisely the point. It's perfectly possible, even probable, that some misinformation made it into the Steele dossier. That's often the case with raw intelligence files. But the veteran CIA officer John Cipher has concluded that a large portion of the dossier is crystal clear, certain consistent and corroborated. Troiter slash Jorge Silva There is no reason to suppose, as the Trumpkins posit, that the Kremlin fed all this information to still in the hopes of discrediting Trump when no one could be certain that the report would ever become public. Why, in any case, would the Kremlin seek to discredit the most pro-Russian candidate ever to pursue the presidency? Why, moreover, would Putin want to help Hillary Clinton? whom he is widely reported to revile for her tough anti-Russia line. And why, if the Kremlin were intent on making Trump out to be a Russian stooge, would its spokesman so vociferously deny that very charge? To believe that the Steele dossier was an elaborate Kremlin ploy requires the same sort of faith-based reasoning necessary to believe that Barack Obama wasn't born in the U.S. or that Ted Cruz's father killed JFK in the final analysis, the Steele dossier is a sideshow and the question of who funded it is a sideshow of a sideshow. Yes, 
The FBI saw it, but it's not the basis for the unanimous assessment released in early January by the FBI, CIA, NS.